so today we are going to read about the microscopy that's a very short topic in microbiology and not a very important topic still you can expect a few mcqs from this in your university exams so we will just go superficially over this topic and you can also quickly go through this topic before your university exams because there may be some mcqs from this topic okay so there are different microscopes that we use in our uh, uh, laboratories in microbiology and uh, the most commonly used of uh, the most commonly used is the light microscope which is otherwise also called as the bright field microscope so what is the meaning of this bright field microscope so bright field means that it produces dark images against the bright background okay uh, just few uh, after few minutes we will see that dark field microscope where we see uh, bright microorganisms against a dark background so this is just opposite of that that here we see dark images against the bright background so that's the main point of the bright field microscope okay and as i have told that this is the most commonly used microscope and uh, the principle behind this bright field microscope is that the light reflected from the specimen as well as the light which is not reflected from the specimen both are captured by the objective lens and that's why we see a dark image against a bright background we will see this concept when we will read the dark field microscope just in few seconds so after this uh, bright field microscope let's jump on to the dark field microscope so in dark field microscope let's uh, let's first make a quick diagram how this microscope work so suppose this is the lamp okay suppose this is the lamp l4 lamp and here we have got the condenser we know that in the uh, in the uh, microscope there is a condenser so in the condenser let's make a op 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 opaque disc in the center okay so in the uh, condenser generally condensers do not have a opaque disc at the center but in case of dark field microscopes there is a opaque disc in the center and then we have the area over where we put our specimen so suppose this is our area over which uh, we have put our specimen this is our specimen over this slide okay and then we have got the objective lens and here we have our eyes from which we are seeing over there okay so what happens is that from this lamp the light rays goes okay the light rays goes and since this this red uh, opaque disc is uh, opaque so the light will not be able to pass through that opaque disc rather the light will be passing from the periphery of that opaque disc okay so the only so only the lights which are uh, passing from the periphery they are reaching to the this specimen this our specimen okay and when they are reaching to the specimen they are reflected and captured by the reflected and captured by the objective lens but the light rays which are not reflected by these uh, uh, not reflected by this uh, microorganism why are they not reflected by this microorganism because they are going from the periphery they are going from more periphery so suppose this is the light this is this is going more periphery more periphery so this will not uh, you know go through the uh, mic uh, micro this specimen this will not pass or this will not get reflected from the specimen because it is passing uh, this is more away from the uh, disc you know so this is not passing through or reflected through that microorganism that's why this will not captured by the this will not captured by the objective lens and it, it will cross the objective lens just by its side so it will not captured by this it will not captured by this objective lens it will cross like this okay so as the these uh, non reflected lights from the specimen are not captured by the objective lens that means only the lights which are passing or which are reflected by this microorganism are by this microorganism are captured by this objective lens okay so we see that only the light we we assume our eyes or our brain assumes that the light is coming from the microorganism only okay and the surrounding area of that microorganism is dark that's why we see here in case of dark field microscope a bright image against a dark field while in case of the light microscope we were seeing bright uh, dark images against bright field 
but the um, but the whole concept here is opposite okay just ulta that here we see the bright images against the dark field because the non reflected light these non reflected lights just cross the objective lens by its side they are not captured by the objective lens okay so the only the light which are reflected from this microorganism these lights only these lights which are captured uh, which are reflected from the specimen or from the microorganism they are captured by this objective lens they are captured by this objective lens and that's why we our brain assumes that the light is coming only from the microorganism and the surrounding area is dark that's why we assume that there is a bright microorganism in a dark field or a bright image against a dry dark field and that's why it is also called as the dark field microscope or microscopy so this is the base basic concept behind this dark field microscope so i have uh, written here also uh, how does this work so uh, the condensing lens has a central opaque disc that i have uh, made with red ink so the light passed uh, only through the periphery but not through the central portion because it is opaque disc okay so the oblique rays which fall on the specimen only those lights are reflected okay from the microorganisms and only those lights which are reflected from the microorganisms are captured by the objective lens okay and that's the uh, that's the reason why we see the bright images against the dark background so why do we use this dark field microscope it is uh, used in certain cases in certain microorganisms we use this dark field microscope to see them like the spirochetes or other some other cylinder bacteria we use this dark field microscope to see the cylinder bacilli and uh, one of example of which is the spirochetes okay so you need not to know this much about this uh, dark field microscope or uh, bright field microscope but you can remember the examples only that's enough for you but just for information uh, i have uh, explained the concept or the principle behind working of this dark field microscopes okay so next we have the phase contrast microscope so in the phase contrast microorganisms we see unstained living organisms okay so this phase contrast microscope is useful for seeing the unstained living organisms again here the principle uh, is not useful uh, you need not to know the principle behind this phase contrast microscope just remember that unstained living organisms are used and what is the use of the phase contrast microscope so the use is that it detects the motility and it detects the cellular content so cellular contents can be seen with the help of this phase contrast microscope knowing this much is enough about the phase contrast microscope you need not to know the principle behind the working of the phase contrast microscope or for that matter any other microscope okay next we have the fluorescence microscope so fluorescence microscope is for the organisms uh, who produce fluorescence or uh, we make the organism to produce the fluorescence by adding some fluorescent dyes okay so let's see how does that happen so when the when we use the fluorescent dyes then the organisms absorbs the uh, i mean the fluorescent dye dye which is coated over that uh, microorganism that absorbs the short wavelength uv lights okay and that fluorescent dye gets activated and when that fluorescent dye gets activated that emits visible light of longer wavelength and we know that the longer wavelength lights are visible lights and we our eyes can see the uh, those uh, longer wavelength lights okay that's uh, why we we become able to see the fluorescence from those organisms and by that we uh, detect the organism by the fluorescence okay now you should remember some of the fluorescent dyes which are used in certain conditions so some of the examples are like auramin o and the rhodamin b which stains the mycolic acid now if you remember the mycolic acid is present in the acid uh, i mean in the uh, tubercle bacilli cell wall okay so there uh, is the uh, mycolic acid present so uh, these auramin o and the rhodamin b um, are uh, fluorescent dyes are used for staining those mycolic acid other than that we have some other fluorescent dyes like acridin orange that is used for staining of the single stranded or the double stranded dnas and fits 
that means the fluorescence isothiocyanate that binds to the antibodies and that is helpful in the immunofluorescence assay that is useful in the immunology okay so in, in the immunofluorescence assay we use the fluorescence isothiocyanate now last but not the least we have the electron microscope that is the recent development uh, in the field of biology so this electron microscope was developed by the Ernst Frusca and uh, the uh, major problem or you know the uh, requirement behind the electron microscope is that it can only evaluate the very thin specimens like if you want to see a thick specimen then you will not be able to see in the electron microscope so for that uh, you have to first uh, do the uh, fixation dehydration and cutting of that uh, thick specimen into thin specimens by microtome knife if you have done your pathology you must be knowing that so with the help of that microtome knife we produce thin specimens and then we put that on the metal slide remember till now we have seen only the glass slides but here in case of electron microscope we use the metal slide preferably of copper and then we see it in the electron microscope now here also you need not to know the uh, principle behind working on this electron microscope just remember the concept i mean just remember the examples and what type of electron microscopes are there so there are two types of electron microscopes that is the transmission electron microscope and the scanning electron microscope so the basic difference is that the transmission electron microscope gives us a 2d view and the uh, scanning electron microscope gives us a 3d view the transmission electron microscope is used for visualizing the internal structures the internal structures of the cells and the scanning electron microscope is useful for visualizing the surface structure so this is the some of the important points behind this or with the transmission electron microscope and the scanning electron microscope that you may know okay because it may be asked in in, uh, in mcqs so that may be helpful for you okay so that's all about the microscopy chapter there is nothing uh, in this chapter just uh, go through this chapter uh, superficially that will be enough okay let's catch up in next lecture